What's up guys, Larry Chen here. Welcome to another episode of Hoonigan Autofocus. We are at the Lane Motor Museum uh, outside of Nashville. We got Robert here, who is one of the curators. Welcome, right? yeah, thanks for coming. We, uh, we appreciate you coming. Uh, we know you're gonna love it. Okay, so <laughs> I've, I've just kind of like peered around a little bit. I didn't really look too far. I just walked in the door and I looked around. I saw you have a Radwood installation. That's right. Which, I mean, that's my era. Oh my you gosh, know? yeah. The problem with a lot of car museums, honestly, is some of the cars are a little too unobtainable and a, a lot of the cars, honestly, they're just not of my era. And yeah. it's hard to relate to them, you know? I have to say, it's something that I've thought about too, is how do you, how do you engage the youth or a younger generation and what are they into because you know I, I i was into a certain kind of style of car and i collected cars and grew up with them but it's like you know a younger generation grew up with a, a different kind of car and i was kind of at the end of radwood you know i had i had sobs and and uh volkswagens and and uh so i was really into this idea and and jeff our director uh, is the one who brought it up he said why don't we have a radwood show which we all were totally into because again we want to tap into a, a, a certain demographic that we think isn't really kind of showcased in museums but it's true and it, it, it does happen more and more but it's fun to be able to bring out some of the more unusual cars that we don't normally show because of that mm -hmm. you know okay so then Let's start from the beginning. This is open to the public, yeah. so anybody who comes to this area, you know, they can stop by and check it out. Totally. Uh, but what did this start life as? Our director, Jeff Lane, he came to Nashville and he is from Michigan. His, his family comes from um, car culture in Michigan and he started collecting cars here and there and he had a vending machine business that, that really became successful for him while he was here in Nashville. And at one point, I think somebody asked him how many cars he had, and he wasn't sure how many because they were dispersed all around Nashville in different places in storage. I think he, he figured he had about, I don't know, 60. And then it came to him the idea of making a place where he could bring them all together and people could see them because He's a real generous guy, and he just loves people talking about them, looking at them, and unusually enough for a museum, he likes people to drive them. So we actually drive these things. Um, and so my background is in museums, and um, you know we're always taught just the opposite. It's like, do not touch. <laughs> yeah, so this is more of an experience you know, right through the door when you go through it, it's like photography is encouraged. Yeah. Um, but also, these were method of, these were made for transportation. Exactly. Most of them. Uh, some of them were made for racing. Yeah. Um, but that's kind of what they're meant to do. And in order to fully experience it, you can't just look at it. You have to smell it, hear it, smell touch it, it and exactly. just experience, experience it. it, right? Yeah. So yeah. The, the cool thing about this museum and correct me if I'm wrong, it's like a quirky, obtainable, normal car museum yeah. versus like, it's not just a bunch of Ferraris, Lamborghinis, exactly. and like exotic Bugattis. Yeah, they're rare, and so sure. are a lot of these cars. A yeah. lot of these cars are rare, but a lot of these aren't that expensive either. Right, yeah, and a lot a lot of them are like people's cars, you know, and, and um, I think, that Jeff has a real eye for that kind of thing. They're, they're unique in that they were for everybody, um, but they also had some kind of a technical, unique component to them or something real unusual. Yeah, so the reason why we're here today is because we wanted to come visit the Nissan collection, but apart from the actual cars that Nissan officially has in their collection, you guys also have the entire Pike collection yeah right every single yeah. pike car All the pike cars. this is exactly what i mean they're not that expensive people like you and i can still buy them yeah for a relatively good price but the fact that they're all in one place and they're uh essentially st stored here or they're they're kept here yeah. for history yeah that's such a big deal we think so 
Yeah, we really do. It, our MO, of course, you know, I say we drive these cars and, and whatnot, and we do, but really we're here to preserve them and also to showcase that history and, and fill in that history that we think is unusual, and we want to we wanna keep that. So how many cars do you have in the collection oh my right gosh. now? So when, when, you, when you walk through the door, like I did when I first came here, I was just blown away and overwhelmed by what I saw. On the exhibit floor, there's roughly 150 vehicles, and then down below us, there's roughly another 500 cars, mm -hmm. um, give or take. And so we're, we, our mission is to show cars from the collection because we have so many of them. So they're down in storage. Uh, it doesn't mean that they're not as good as the ones up here or unusual enough. They actually are. We just have ideas for shows and once a year we rotate them and bring up new cars to, to look at. Yeah, in fact, I mean, I had a chance to walk through downstairs super quickly, yeah. and I think some of my favorite cars already are just down there. Are downstairs <laughs> uh, again? Not anything like supercar or anything yeah. crazy like that. It's just cars that a I've never been able to see, or b it's just like like a halo car, right? Yeah. Like the the Evo. What is that? The Tommy Mackinac Evo, <laughs> yeah. right? Uh -huh. And then uh, the Renault Clio oh, V6. Oh gosh, yeah. That, oh, that, just so cool. Yeah, the Renault Clio is such a cool car such a fun car to drive, you know? And uh, that's a car that I would never be able to, it's a car that I've always loved from afar. Um, I was blown away by driving it. And, uh, but also, you know, I was lucky enough to just take it for an exercise run. And uh, what I loved about that is the people who recognize that car on the outside who are like, oh my gosh, this, this car, it, I haven't seen one like in, in the flesh and blood. Well, that's the thing is, I mean, that's the point of this yeah. museum because most of these cars never, ever, ever hit the U.S. roads. Yeah. In fact, a lot of these cars are still not federally legal for uh, normal people like us that's to right. own. But, you know, as a museum, you guys can display them that's for show right. and display. And that's so cool. I think that's the coolest part about it. Yeah, <laughs> Yeah, so, that's true. Yeah, let's, uh, can, can we take a walk yeah, through? Yeah, let's take a yeah, walk let's around. let's walk through some of the sections. All right, so this is a very interesting area of the yeah. museum. Um, what it, what are we, where are we right now? This is, this is Wingless Wonders, and this is our collection of propeller-driven vehicles. Um, something that I didn't really know existed. I mean, I knew of some, like the, like the Layat, you know, he was a French pilot that decided to, when airplanes were taken to the air, he thought, well, why don't we take these to the street? And so he wanted to mass produce a propeller powered vehicle that would that would drive along on the streets and and he actually did and sold them and they were licensed uh, for a street use talk about inefficient oh my gosh T totally inefficient <laughs> <laughs> just stop and go traffic stop just, and go traffic blowing blowing yeah. people away just blow and it takes forever that's that's the, you know a couple of the downfalls a couple of the bad ideas about it were that it was it's so loud and the wind wash is incredible, you know? Uh, but uh, the, probably the biggest one is acceleration is really, really slow. No one exists then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I mean. Like, this is the section yeah. for uh, people. Like, the, any one of these cars. I know. You know, it, 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 I could imagine just driving them and enjoying them. I, I've got a nostalgia for it, but I drove these way into into my my 20s and 30s. But you know, like the six series Shark Nose um, or this the Citron, um, the BX, the yeah. it, the AutoZone. Oh, the AutoZone, so cool. Very cool. Yeah. I mean, and you know, these you just don't see on the on the street. Um, That's awesome. as you know. So this is an interesting thing. Like I noticed this is a theme around yeah. the museum. There's so many small cars. Yeah, yeah. So what's we, the deal with this? We have a really, really healthy collection, if not the largest collection of, probably the largest collection of European cars. A subset of that um, is micro cars. And it's something that Jeff is really into. And this Peel 50, this is, you know, these were made on the Isle of Man. Yeah, and so this is the one with the handle. This is the one with you, the handle. That's how you back up. That's how you back up. Yeah, you just this is the Jeremy Clarkson. That's right. Like, yeah, this is the 
famous Jeremy Clarkson car. Very popular. Yeah. It, it's so much fun. Uh, and this gets driven around all the time. It, it's fun to see it go around. You know, it's a good I, it was a good idea for the Isle Man where it rained all the time and, you know, keep it minimal. Yeah. And, uh, but, and th that's what it's known for. Isle Man yeah. is these things and also motorcycle Motorcycles. The yeah. TT, right? Yeah, yeah totally. But, like, but, you know, when you the, think of the two, it's like they're so oh yeah, it has opposites. The, yeah, it has that uh, logo. That's right. Huh. Well, okay, so there's so many of, of cars that look like this. Yeah. Even just downstairs, I walk through <laughs> some of the collection yeah. and I think to myself, that looks like a toy yeah. or that it looks like, it looks like something that yeah. some kid just drew. Like, hey, let me just draw yeah. what, a, what I think a car should look like <laughs> and then let's make it. It's, it's so funny you say that because this car in particular was exactly that scenario. It was a guy at Road and Track who was, who, uh, was a cartoonist and, and it made a satire about the Cyclops being this great car. And, and so they wanted to do a road test on, on it, so they actually made one. <laughs> and, and so it's this kind of subculture of people who actually do make Cyclopses from that little cartoon drawing. That's so crazy. Yeah. Huh. Oh man. Amazing. This is, this is like carception <laughs> here. Yeah. I mean, I don't really know what to say. It's, it's, it's a, uh, when, okay, so when we were thinking about this as an exhibit, it was interesting to see how it came to fruition because we were talking about, oh, we should do this thing where we, we take utility ve vehicles and, and what they're made to carry. And, and Jeff was like, why don't we just, stack them on top of each other. And I thought, well, that's brilliant, but we're not gonna do that, right? And they were like, yeah, we're gonna do it. And I was just thinking, how in the, how in the hell could we do that? And uh, it was remarkable that, that uh, the team here was, is um, mechanically inclined enough to make this happen. It's funny because you can stack one more level if yeah. you just took this outside, yeah. right? Because you have exactly. that whatever mover. What is it called? The one the, outside? The, the, the lark. L lark. <laughs> the lark. <laughs> the lark. The lark is crazy. It's... Um, we'll, we'll get to that when yeah. we go downstairs. Oh. But um, yeah, you could stack this and maybe, I don't know, a dozen other oh, cars or for sure. however many yeah. other cars. This and yeah. then a bunch of tanks and yeah. more trucks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so this is a workshop here. This is our workshop, yeah. Uh -huh. So this is where we do all the restoration of, of uh, some of our vehicles. We take some off-site too, but, but um, we have a full, a full shop and, and uh, expert, expert uh, restoration team. Michael just went downstairs there. Um, but he's, he does all this body work. It's, it's uh, remarkable to watch it happen. And I come through here all the time just to, just to watch the progress and talk about it. Um, just to see Michael design a fender, and right now he's making a seat that that is not in existence anymore, but we could only see a part of in a photograph. So this is what I mean, like, this, or this is one of the things that I bring up all the time when it comes to car restoration yeah. on this level. The people that designed it aren't long gone. Yeah, uh, they're, they're gone. I mean, maybe they're not even a thought. Yeah. But the point is that there's some kind of documentation somewhere for these guys to make their best interpretation of what yeah. it should look like, yeah. right? Yeah, and, and uh, they, they, the, the uh, experts, know enough mechanically and engineering and the history of these cars that they could have an idea of where it might come from, but then have the, the knowledge of how to, how to do that from nothing. Mm. That's yeah, incredible. incredible. So what did we, th this is a, a weird section. This is a, yeah. the cloth section or Yeah, the fabric covered fabric? cars. Um, yeah, we call it stretched uh, fabric covered cars. And it was actually a good idea because when, when supplies were limited after the war of, of metal, and actually right at the dawn of between coach, coach building and, and making cars out of metal, you know, they were still made out of wood and it was cheaper to finish them in a synthetic leather than it was to paint them because painting took a long time and the paints weren't that good. And it weatherproofed the car as well. So it was a good idea. 
Later on, when, when paints became better, they did away with it totally. I mean, but a lot of tops still remain. But a lot of tops, yeah. yeah. And so it came back as a style thing. It was like, it was needed and then it went away, but then it came back as a total style thing. Mm. Pretty incredible, the vinyl roof. Um, uh, is that like an archival room or what is that? That is, yeah, that's where we keep, that's a, a brand new archive. It's uh, climate controlled and we keep everything that comes with some of the more rare rarer cars like uh, original photographs, handwritten letters, draw, engineering drawings of, of uh, some of these rare cars. But at any car we get our hands on, we try to get as much material that's original with the vehicle and then we keep it in the archive. And that's for researchers to come and look through or for us to reference back to. Mm. But it's, it's brand new. The Amphicar was kind of mass produced in a sense. There weren't a lot of them made, but there, it was produced. Um, and it's a great car. We, it's a great car. We drive this to the lake three times a year, wow. give rides in it. Do you guys ever take the Lark out then? We don't take the Lark out, but we do start it every year. And that's got, that's got an engine for each wheel. So it's got four Detroit diesel engines in it. And we, we do start it and keep it going. Yeah. That's insane. It's a totally insane. So it, it doesn't even move there? It happened. doesn't move anymore. Aww. We used to drive it around and we used to smash cars with it because uh, it was fun. Um, but we, I think it was, I forget what kind it was. It was either an NSU or an old BMW. Um, we drove over it. Yeah, we got, saw it down did there. Did you see it was that? A three series. Yeah. Like, yeah. Flat tire. Yeah, that's amazing. So this is one of the uh, Pike cars I was talking about. This is the yeah. S Cargo. S Cargo, right? yeah. Um, so fun. It, it's, it's, I love the play on words. I love, yeah. but, but like behind that, this is what I'm talking about. This car. Yeah. Why would anybody drive that? Like that's, that looks like a death the trap. The William Clio. I know it is. You really have to wonder. You really have to wonder. And, but when you, it's like, you know, in the seventies when, when um, we were starting to ration uh, gas um, and oil, it's like. Look how small the hole is just to get air in. <laughs> Or I, I, I don't even I don't even know if the motor is back there or it, it's in the front knows? there. Yeah, and this is this it definitely is one of the strangest micro cars of the '70s. You know, it's real um, kind of unusual and <laughs> lesser known for sure. Yeah, but yeah, and, and um, I just love all the pedestrian cars like the Citroen yeah. here. Yeah. Like, well, why would you want this? Why would you keep this as a time capsule? You know, because this was so many people's throwaway cars yeah, when they totally. first got into driving. But guess what? It's like interesting and it's unique and it's cool that yeah. it's here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we really love these cars. And we have a really huge collection of Citroen and, and a big collection of French cars. Um, so we, we do love them. And even this is part of the collection, yeah, huh? This Prius? It is, yeah. I mean, because right now, this is an ordinary pedestrian car for, for today's day and age. Yeah. But who knows, 20 years down the line, this might be yeah. like something, wow, it's crazy something, that they're yeah, Prius. That I remember we, driving oh, this yeah, thing. Yeah, early, early uh, hybrid car, you know? Yeah. Sure, yeah. We have some interesting smart cars and, and but you're right, they're like, um, you know, not, not that noted for anything too, advanced, you know, but I mean the hybrid car for sure, but um, yeah. Oh, this Honda you love it? is so cool. <laughs> like what the heck? Uh-huh. This is a, another small car. I, I mean, I don't even, what was this for? Do you know? Yeah, I, I, I couldn't tell you. It seemed, it makes it seem like it was some kind of military vehicle. Yeah, I, it, I don't it, think it was, but it, it was definitely like a more of a train the, vehicle. Look at the, the cute little spare yeah. tire. It's a little <laughs> Bridgestone. Uh huh. Incredible. It's funny because it's part of the design yeah. of the vehicle, uh, or if there was a design at all. It, I mean, it really <laughs> does look designed. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and it runs and it drives. We're just, we just had it out a couple weeks ago, that's, driving it around. Yeah, that's the thing is like, there's so much kitty litter all over the place <laughs> because these yeah. cars, you know, they bleed. They do. They, they, they leak oil they no matter do. what you do. There's yeah. nothing you can do to and not make them. It's true. And we don't drink, like a normal car museum that would show more like, you know, beautiful cars would drain everything from them. Yeah. And, Every uh, drop and on top of that, 
They wouldn't even let the tires touch the ground. Yeah, yeah. no, it's They'd true. They'd be floating. They'd be totally floating. Yeah. That's what, I mean, that's what it is like, uh, like at the uh, Henry Ford Museum. Yeah. Every car is jacked up. Yeah. And you can see that it's been modified to To kind of just hold it. Stand the test of time. Yeah. Right? Just be a time capsule. Yeah. Um, but here, you, every, all, like the goal is to have everything running, right? Yeah, the goal is to have everything running and drive them and keep them healthy by driving them and ex exercising them. And um, yeah, and, and you know, that's what they're made for, you know? This thing is super cool too. Oh, this, this MG Metro? Yeah, Whoa. this is pretty I've awesome. never seen anything like this. Gosh. What a cool car. Yeah. Yeah, so that's the Lark out there. That is the, <laughs> our largest vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it's kind of sad in a way because I bet you most of them got destroyed, right? They did get destroyed, yeah. It's Vietnam era, and, and uh, I mean, that was the attitude. It was like you couldn't, it cost too much to bring them back, and they didn't want the technology to be utilized by someone else, and so they sank them. Can we know? take a look at it? Yeah, sure. Oh, but again, Another car that I would absolutely oh, love, 944. Yeah. Uh -huh. This thing is in, it's is in really good condition. It's really nice. Amazing. This God. is a museum car that I would love. I love it. You don't really get the size yeah, it's of hard. comparison. Like, it's, it's really hard until you stand right next yeah. to it. Yeah, yeah. It is you, so big. It's so big. It's like, I mean, but the, the, the middle of the tire is basically up to my neck, you know, and <laughs> it's, it's made for transporting tanks and whatever the army has. But yeah. this is what I'm talking about. This is, this is crazy that you drove over yeah, this. We drove over this and it's as flat as a pancake. This was a BMW and now it's just a piece of scrap metal. It's, but yeah, like, it's I love that this, so this actually has to be on jack stands because otherwise it would crush the tire. It would totally crush the tire and the tires are, we have an extra, we have one extra set of tires and that's it. We don't know where we, where we would resource them from. Maybe we could get them somewhere, but it's like, you know. It's just so crazy. Like there's barnacles still on here. Yeah. Right? Yeah, totally. And there's some huge, there's a couple of huge props in the, in the front. You can yeah. check them out there. Massive. Huh. Four wheel of steering. Yeah. Look at this. Look at this gate here. I mean, that is just. It's insane. It's like you could. It's bigger than some apartments. You could live in there. Well, I don't. It's it's like it's like five New York apartments in yeah. there. You know. <laughs> it's so crazy. So the, this is what I like about this museum. You could get up close. You could just see every little detail and it, it's honestly just sitting here aging yeah but it, it's so cool i would have i've never seen anything like this before oh man this yeah. is so cool it's hard to it's hard to believe that this was driven through downtown nashville um in the middle of the night to here hmm. amazing just incredible danger no way <laughs> You don't like, say. Like, like, who's that for? Is it for the fish or? <laughs> you don't say. This is incredible. <laughs> what a collection. Like, just when you think yeah. it, it, it doesn't get any cooler. <laughs> so this is all air-cooled cars. This is all air-cooled cars, yeah. Huh. Yeah, so there's a lot of Citroen, a lot of, um, uh, what do we have here? I mean, it's a lot of Citroen, uh, Pannard. This old BMW. This old BMW, this really strange micro car, one of a kind, what Hoffman. It's just so wide, it but just, it's so stubby. It's wide and stubby, and it has a, a single uh, tire and in, in the center. The center of gravity is really odd. It still has a radio, for whatever reason. Yeah. But Very like, there is some storage, but and what, was what the a waste of space. For? Yeah. Uh, it's very difficult to get into and get out of. Um, huh. It's a strange mobile. This, this is one of those, only only you guys would love something like this. You know, it's <laughs> uh -huh. like the whole, only a mother would love this. Exactly. This. Like, what the, 
What were they thinking? It looks like a normal car that was just squished. Yeah, like, like somebody a, took like a, a piece of Like a Volkswagen clay. bus yeah. or something that was just squished completely. <laughs> it really does. Amazing. It's, it's, just, it's one of the stranger ones, and um, it fits right in here. So cool. What a, what a, what a cool car. Yeah, it's a 360. What? Yeah. You guys have a couple Subarus here. Yeah, the, and this fast track here is real neat. Again, small car. I couldn't imagine this being a brand new car. Yeah, can you imagine? And, and these were sold, well, I'm not sure if the peanut, but the 360 was sold in, in America. You know, it was really marketed no here way. and sold. Look at that livery. Yeah. That is incredible. It's funny that, this, so this is the air-cooled section and there's not one air-cooled Porsche. Huh? <laughs> right, yeah. Uh, I mean, that would we, be the one that you would expect. Right, but yeah, that, we I don't guess. have one, yeah. We've, we've got 911, 948, 944. That's, that's the fun part of it though. The, we, the, the fun part yeah. is that you wouldn't be able to see something that you, it's yeah. not typical, you know? It's not a typical uh -huh. car museum. The, the 2CV was great off-road. Yeah, and, and you know it's great suspension and clearance, and it they went up. The firefighters went up this trail, and then it dead ended. And in order to get back down, they had to back down the entire way. So they came up with the, this idea to have a two ended car so that you could switch. Yeah. And so steering, you could lock steering on one side and switch it, lock it on the other side. And you could flip this, or oh, this was and take the covers off yeah. and. That is so cool. Oh man. Yeah, I remember hearing about this. And I love that the plate is on this side. Yeah. Cause, but it, cause <laughs> it doesn't matter what side it is. It doesn't matter, yeah. And it has two engines. Two engines, yep. Huh. I guess it would have been, it makes me wonder if it would have been hard, easier to make one engine just have some kind of gearbox to go the other way, yeah, but I, I guess not. They, yeah. They're like, you know they what, let's just put a whole <laughs> separate... Let's, let's just take two, two CVs and just put them together. <clears throat> amazing. This, this is, is a huge car for almost today's standard. Oh yeah, it is. It is so big. But it's great, you know, it's one of a kind. Um, it, it almost looks like an airplane. It really does, yeah. Yeah, interestingly enough, it was, it was made um, by, or it was fabricated, the body anyway, by, by airline um, fabricators. And the great thing about this was his whole idea was this door system. And he was all about safety. And instead of having a door that swung out, he, he invented this clamshell door. And it, it was a great idea, invention for the time, and he patented it. And he took it to the car companies, and every one of them said no. Except for BMW, right? <laughs> Didn't they make a, they, the Z1 that had the right. door that yeah. went under? Yeah. That's right. And and there was another company. There was a there was a station wagon that I think Ford came out with too that had a that had a kind of a clamshell right. gate. Like this is a car. A very good example of something I've only played in video games. Yeah. I've never seen one in real life, yeah. but it's so cool to see. And it's something special. This was just a pedestrian car, but it's in a museum. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's it, incredible. It really is. I, I had the same reaction when I saw this car. I was like, oh my gosh, I don't believe it. Yeah. But who would, like, why would a museum collect it? But I'm so, it's, I love that we have these cars. So, so this is the biggest European car collection out of, it outside is. of Europe. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, have you seen another museum like this anywhere else? Gosh, you know, I, I haven't, and but I haven't been to, I mean of this type anyway, but I, I haven't really been to many car museums in Europe, and so I don't really know, but from what I see and what people send me, there are some really amazing museums. <laughs> the funny know. thing is like, um, one of the museums that I went to in Europe, in the UK, was the Haynes oh, yeah. Museum, right? Yeah. Um, they have a bunch of American cars. That's so and funny. And they, they display it like wh how we display European cars, you know? <laughs> <And that's, laughs> oh my it's gosh. Just like, it's you know, just hilarious. It, you know? it is hilarious because when we, get, when we get someone from France or Germany and they come and they see the, some of the cars we have on display, 
they have got, they have got to come get us, and they laugh. They're like, I can't believe you're sh putting this car on your exhibition floor. Yeah, she said, yeah. you know, we have a lot of these. <laughs> but but it's it's endless. Every single one of these, every yeah. single one of these. I mean, at least most of them. Yeah. They they were somebody's car brand they, new. They were somebody's car brand new. Yeah. Yeah. But like, I know this one's famous. I don't know anything about it. Yeah, the um, Davis the. The, uh, the three-wheel Davis car, and, and uh, only seven were made, and what an interesting character. We just, we happen to have all of his uh, archive materials. Really? And it's incredible, because he was just, he was very passionate about this car. He wanted to ma make it, and usually when people talk about Davis, they kind of highlight that he was eventually um, taken to court and such, or he was a flim-flam. But, but, but when you look at what look he at tried it. to do, yeah, he was it's just so passionate. It's so crazy. It. It's, 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 a, it's it, a wedge, like a yeah. wedge of pie, or I don't know, a shoe. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. when people say the BMW Z3 is a shoe, yeah. or, or yeah, the, 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 uh, shoe. Yeah, the yeah, clown yeah, shoe, yeah, yeah. Um, this is definitely a shoe. This is definitely yeah. a shoe, yeah. <laughs> um, this is another car that I looked at, and I was like, yeah. that is beyond a death trap. That is, I mean, <laughs> you got a guy in the back. Uh-huh. You've got to really trust this guy who's, who's back here. Right. Cause, cause so that's the passenger, and that's the... That's the passenger. That's the driver. Yeah. What an what a interesting design. <laughs> like, you, you, if you're about to crash into something, you're crashing this guy yeah. into the... Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just so blown away. Like, some of these cars, I just... Yeah. It, some, it doesn't make any sense. There's some really great ideas, and some of them are so unique and, and ahead of their time, and some are so outlandish that they would never work. And, and uh, for us, that's kind of equal, you know? Those are the things we, we like to show. So for those of you guys who are yelling at me in the comments about, hey, you just passed this Citroen rally car, or you just passed this Martin, <laughs> whatever this thing is, you know, <laughs> can you show that? The point is, I, I just want to inspire you guys to hope, you know what, just travel to here and check this place out because there's just so many things so to see. And also, people that come here, they potentially could get a tour down here too, right? Yeah, yeah we give tours on the weekends, Saturday. Um, Saturdays are tour days down here. Um, and uh, special the, this, this is the ugliest car of all time. Yeah. Right? yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, I'm glad we both agree. This uh, is the, absolutely, yeah. yeah. It's interesting that they brought, they brought back, uh, or attempted to bring back an iconic, classic, beautiful, little, you know, efficient vehicle with this car right here. It's so it's strange horrible. in design. Yeah, and then it's parked close to my favorite car here in this museum, which um, I know I would oh have the most amount of fun with this car. Uh, Did, you got, no, okay, forget the Toyota Sarah parked in the back. <laughs> that was the inspiration for the McLaren F1. Yeah, um, good eye. But this, this, Just, oh my gosh. Oh my God, I have, Tommy Mackinac edition. Look at the seats. I have to tell you. It's I, so clean. I took this car home. I was lucky to take this car home last weekend. Um, you know, I, I, I really respect them and take care of them. By far, this was, this was the most fun to drive out of anything I've driven here yet. Yeah. Well, the, every one of these, I'm sure, gives you an interesting driving experience. Yeah. This one is for tackling those oh rally gosh. roads, you know? This is a rally car. It feels, like, it feels like you're in complete control of the vehicle around you. It's like you just feel it gripping the road and, and you feel safe and you feel quick and it, it's, that's what this car is. It's unbelievable. This is so cool. I, like, I don't even know how many are in the US. I already opened this oh, and I saw you? that okay. it doesn't have a battery, but yeah. uh, it's this right here. Cool, okay, yeah. yeah. Don't worry, I already opened <laughs> I already <laughs> looked at every part of this car, okay? This, if there's one that you, you said, Larry, you're allowed to drive one yeah. car, I would drive this car. That's, that's I good. would drive well, this car. Next time you come, oh. we will have it ready for you. We'll okay. get a battery in it. But it's All right. Uh, definitely, next time I come for LS Fest yeah. or for Mopar Fest or anything, I, um, Tyler. I get to drive it too, is that what you're saying? <laughs>
that's the one. This is the oh, one. Yeah. This is no, the no, one no. we both want to drive. Yeah, right? no, if I could take any of them, it'd probably be the Yeah, yeah. This one. I mean, look at it. Yeah, I, yeah, look at it. It wouldn't be that hard of a choice. Yeah, yeah it, it is. It, I mean, this is the Gran Turismo era. Oh, you know, yeah. this is the car totally. that we, you know, growing up, it's like, you drive this, or you drive a Nissan Skyline, yeah. or you drive a Toyota Supra, yeah. or whatever. Oh, this is of that era, this is... and it, it is the top. It's the pinnacle of yeah. it, you know? So. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Oh my gosh. Very cool. Yeah. What else do we have here? Uh, you have this old feel. BMW yeah. from the 60s, which, talk about a drastic change. Yeah. Um, there's still that, Kidney grill. Yeah, the kidney grill, there's still some things that are recognizable, but it's definitely from just a different era. You could see before the change happened. In this and this is, a, this is a vehicle that I shouldn't be so excited about. Yeah, are you I am excited so about excited e about <laughs> the Renault eSpace because the reason why I'm excited about this is because they built one of these um, like a F1 car, I, oh, I guess they, yeah, they right. merged it. Yeah. So then it was actually a F1 car. I don't think it was this body style, or maybe <laughs> it was, I don't know. But yeah. I mean, it's, it's cool to see, this is a minivan, and it's left-hand drive, it's manual, which looks pretty cool. It's, it's like the Toyota Previa yeah. of Europe. Yeah, completely. I'm sure it was ahead of its time, but there's just, ahead. it just looks pretty cool. Yeah, way ahead of its time, roomy. Um, you know, very capable, but <laughs> <It's just, laughs> style-wise, yeah, you know. this is another. This is a car that when the Europeans come, yeah, they're like, they're like, it's like, why do you have who this? left this hunk of junk yeah. here? Why did you import this? It costs more probably for you to bring yeah. it here from Europe than the actual car. <laughs> um, this is another vehicle where I'm like, why would anybody drive this, or who would even? Yeah. This, 1948. 1948, the Lamar. You know, the, the innovative thing about this, if, if I should be so bold to say, is that it was, it was marketed towards women as a shopping car. You know, you take this, you do your shopping, but the great part about it is it fits right through a doorway. So essentially, you could drive it right through your garden gate, and in some cases, right into your house. So... <laughs> no way. Yeah. I mean, I don't even... It, it, it is, the, the, the design is unlike anything I've ever seen. It's, yeah, it's like, just like so sliced, bad. Yeah, it's just like sliced out of a piece of it, 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 It's like, but it's so bad, it's so good, I guess. And the funny thing is there's a door on both sides for whatever reason, yeah. even though it's one passenger. Yeah. It, or it's, one, one seat. It's not even a passenger. The material and the engineering to create two is, is, is over the top. It's... Um, it's incredible. There's oil and petrol, right? You're nice. <laughs> huh. I, could you just imagine driving, just seeing this on the, on, in London, yeah, no, driving around? I couldn't, although we have driven this around. It doesn't go that fast. Um, huh. And it was amazing to see go through a doorway. It's a little frightening, but it does. Well, okay, so what's your favorite car here? Oh my gosh, well, that's such a tricky question. Oh, you know, you know that's the, trick with being a part of a museum as such is that you f really fall in love with new cars as they come in and but what's your like uh, of the week like or, or uh, what, what yeah. what's your flavor of right now well, uh, like it's very obvious that Tyler and I love the Evo yeah right the, uh, yeah, well it's it's interesting because I just just took that car home yeah um and and I absolutely loved the way it felt. It I was just like it did not let me down. It yeah. was it was felt good. Um, the car next, I mean, that's probably my newest favorite car. Uh, just incredible. The car next to it, the P eighteen hundred, the mm. Volvo, uh. is a car from. It's very nostalgic to me because yeah. I had a nineteen seventy. Wait, isn't that the? Isn't there one that has like two million miles or something yeah, like that? It's yeah, it's a, a P eighteen hundred. Right, right, right. Yeah, and I'm I'm not sure what year, but also it's the Saint drove it, but but that's the one that that uh, turned over. Yeah. And uh, yeah, hmm. and that car I love just because it has nostalgic value. But yeah, no, I like that. <sighs> it's endless. Like I, I could spend so long here, and the thing is, you work here, and you yeah. still haven't really. Uh, I guess you've seen everything, but you haven't really spent time with every it's car. It's true. It's true, and it's 
It's interesting because, uh, I, or I think I know these vehicles and then I do a little research and I find a kind of a uh, breadcrumb of evidence that connects it to a different car. Even though the cars are disparate or they're unusual in their own way, you find the connections to them and that's so fine. So this is uh, your maintenance bay, yeah. right? This is where you do a lot of, like you maintain, maintain a lot them. of the vehicles here. It's true. I couldn't even imagine, like it must be such a backlog of it things to do. Oh my gosh, it really is. And hats off to the guys down here. They're busy all the time. Um, they have a lot of work. They exercise these vehicles, and um, that's, that's what you call it. That's exercise? what we call them. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I we, like that. And, and it's how you keep them going, and and it's kind of why we get to take them, you know, and and care for them outside the museum when, whenever we can. Um, that's so cool. Yeah. Well, listen. Thank you so much for having us. Um, oh. Again, if you guys are in the area, if you guys are in Tennessee or in the Nashville area, definitely come by here. Um, oh, there's one more place we didn't go to. Yeah. Isn't that the garage that everyone's re getting ready yeah. to go? Oh, yeah, 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 let's yeah, just yeah, go yeah. that <laughs> yeah. real quick. Okay, so what's going on here? These cars are part of uh, Rally for the Lane and it's our yearly event where patrons could come and drive one of our cars in a rally. No and, way. Yeah, they drive, they get to drive the car. We've any got, one of these? Any one of these cars. And we, we select them and then, and then we open it up and people could select the car they want. And it's different price points for different cars. And this goes to support Lane. No and way. The drive is real beautiful. Every year it's different. It's through the countryside. Uh, You're we have kidding. lunch. It's that a, is so it's cool. A, it's so a nice the, I mean, I'm sure it ranges, right? It totally what's, ranges. What's like the low end price versus the high end? You know, I don't know that. That's part of the marketing team. Ah. But, but the uh, fact but that right. you could drive one of these, like, I mean. You could drive this, this I, R5 type. Yeah. I would probably drive this. Yeah. <laughs> this thing is, <laughs> that is so cool. <laughs> I, I, you see the theme here? This is like, I, I guess I'm into the rally cars. Yeah. For yeah, whatever reason. Uh, I don't know. I, I just think I, I do too. I love those homologation. Oh, um, this is class. so cool. This uh, R5, so cool. this Renault 5 Turbo has got a brand new rebuilt engine in it. It's so clean. Yeah. The seats, everything. This is, oh, uh, this is beautiful. This is my second favorite car here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible, okay. What, what a nice selection of cars. Huh. Wow. This Alpha's pretty cool. Yeah, Alpha's super cool. Huh. Amazing. That is, that is something else. Boy, so, it's... Uh, it's... It's too bad that the Lark's not part of the rally. <laughs> like, you know, you know, that would be an interesting price point that, that would where be it's a like real you, pay, interesting price point. you pay whatever, $2,000 to drive it Two... over another car <laughs> or something like that. that I don't know. Maybe, a, maybe it a, might be more. That's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, okay. This is really cool. Yeah, again, thank you so much for having us. Definitely cannot wait to come back and definitely cannot wait to maybe drive one of these cars when I come back. You bet, yeah. It no. would be our pleasure to have you come back and, and, and drive one. It's been, it's been awesome having you here. Very cool. Thank you. Yeah, you bet.